right now talk about his book and a whole lot more. Uh, the book is called Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crosshairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump. He is George Papadopoulos, former Trump campaign foreign policy advisor. Uh, Mr. Papadopoulos, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Larry. Listen, uh, first, can you tell me uh, sort of the origins on how you got involved with the Trump campaign in the first place? Uh, who reached out to you and actually brought you into the fold? Sure, it's a great question. Um, so, I was working uh, at the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. in the summer of 2015, where I had spent around five years. Um, and I was looking to get out of uh, the so-called establishment world, and I wanted to take a risk and uh, join what I thought at the time was, was kind of a renegade campaign. Um, so when Donald Trump announced his candidacy, uh, I think his campaign was around three people, uh, Hope Hicks, George Gigikos, and Corey Lewandowski. And I reached out to Corey just out of the blue on LinkedIn, and I said, hi, Corey, my name is George Papadopoulos. Uh, you know, I think I can contribute to the campaign. I'm here in Washington. I'd love to uh, join. And he reached out to me, and uh, he said, uh, you know, let's keep in close touch. You have an interesting background. So fast forward, I ended up joining the uh, Ben Carson campaign uh, for around four months until Ben Carson dropped out. And uh, I had been keeping in touch with the Trump campaign that entire time. And I guess, uh, you know, they finally decided that uh, they needed uh, some more help. They needed to boost the campaign a bit. And uh, they joined. They hired me right after I uh, left the Carson campaign. OK. And then and candidate Trump at that time, he mentioned you right as one of the foreign policy advisors, because a lot of people in the media were like, well, this guy doesn't know anything about the foreign policy. Do you remember when that was that your name was first associated with the Trump campaign? Uh, I believe my. Well, like I said, I was uh, in touch with them from the summer of 2015, but I, I think I uh, formally joined them in early March. Yeah. And then that and then that Washington Post article came out uh, probably around March 21st. But I had uh, my interview in early March and I joined, let's say, officially in early March. See, so what's that's interesting to me because um, you, you you tweeted this weekend, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, you I do, I you do. got a lot of attention with this. I follow you. I'm you know I've been following this story from day one, George. I, uh, I know it's a crazy story. <laughs> you said that you said on Twitter this weekend that a woman in London who was the FBI's legal attaché in the UK and had a personal relationship to Bob Mueller after 9/11, she reached out to you and encouraged you to meet Joseph Mifsud in Rome in March of 2016. Um and introduced Bruce Orr to the top U.K. prosecutor four days before the Trump Tower meeting. So so let's unpack this for a minute. You know, it's first, you know, your name is finally put out there as being connected with the Trump campaign. And at that same time, this mysterious woman in London, an FBI legal attache in the U.K., reaches out to you and said, hey, you should meet this guy, Joseph Mifsud, in Rome. What What's that? Because that sounds like you were set up by the FBI. Well, well, that's exactly what my book, Deep State Target, does. It really provides, for the first time ever, a chronology of the setup that uh, I ended up getting involved in and uh, unfortunately led to the last two years of uh, misery in this country for so many people. Um, but let us let me get back to that point that you just made. Because, well, you uh, that, Real fast, and I did, for people who don't follow it, because you just used the word s- setup, Joseph Mifsud, yeah. you ended up talking with him in Rome. He's the guy who claimed he had connections to the Kremlin and told you that they had a bunch of dirt on Hillary Clinton. And you would have never had that meeting if this other person connected to the FBI hadn't told you to go take the meeting. Absolutely. So I was working at the time in London when I joined the campaign. Uh, It was called the London Center for International Law Practice. This place was filled with a lot of uh, ex-Western diplomats, ex-Western intelligence types. Um, You know, it was at the center of London. It was a very uh, high-level uh, type of political uh, organization I was I was working at for around a couple for about two months, and I notified them that I'm leaving and I'm going to be joining the Trump campaign. And they said immediately when I told them that they said this is horrible. You shouldn't do that. Uh, Donald Trump's a pariah. But if you're going to end up leaving, you should come meet uh, this woman, and her name was Arvinder Sambe. At the time, in March of 2016, I had no idea who this woman was. I characterize her in my book as this mid-50s woman with frizzy hair, uh, she, where she came to me and told me, well, before you go, you need to go on a business trip to Link Campus in Rome with this organization, and you're going to meet a lot of interesting people there who are going to help you with Trump. And 
at that meeting in Rome, that's where I met Joseph Mifsud. So this entire uh, meeting and the saga with Joseph Mifsud was no coincidence. It wasn't a, a, a meeting that just came out of the blue. It was orchestrated by this lady who not only had a personal relationship with Bob Mueller dating back to 9-11, anyone can Google her name right now who's listening to this, but she also was the legal attache for the FBI in London at the time where she's encouraging me to meet Joseph Mifsud. So the story uh, becomes a lot more complicated than has been uh, re- reported the last two years. Well, yeah, it sounds like the FBI, it, someone connected to the FBI at least, was encouraging you and putting you in the place to be in, with this guy, Joseph Muswood. And then to make matters even more strange, people keep in the media keep describing Joseph Muswood as this guy who's connected to Moscow or some kind of Russian agent. But you don't think that at all. In fact, you have reason to believe that he's also connected to the FBI or the CIA. Look, where I met Joseph Mifsud, for everyone listening, I met Joseph Mifsud at a place where he was a professor called Link Campus in Rome. Link Campus, another place that everyone listening to this show can Google, is a school which trains CIA, FBI, and Italian intelligence officials. David Ignatius of the Washington Post wrote a very interesting story about this place in 2004, where he was attending a conference there with high-level MI6 and CIA officials. So this so-called Russian asset was a professor at a university which trains Western intelligence operatives, and he himself had deep connections to both the State Department, the CIA, the FBI, and the British MI6. So when Bob Mueller characterizes him as a... Russian asset, in my humble opinion, that did much more damage to the reputation and integrity of Bob Mueller and the entire uh, investigation into the so-called Russian collusion than any other factor did, including probably indicting Paul Manafort. So is there evidence anywhere that this guy, Joseph Mifsud, is in fact a Russian asset, or is that just, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, uh, conjecture? That's conjecture. He never was. Uh, It's my current understanding that he's being... Uh, held in Italy under the protection of the Italian state. I recently gave an interview to uh, Italian uh, Sky News where I told the Italian government flat out that it's in your interest to reveal everything you know about uh, Joseph Mifsud and the operation he was on when he was uh, discussing uh, uh, this uh, information with me. George Papadopoulos is going to stay with us, thankfully, for one more segment because I have more questions. But one real fast one. I think you can do this pretty quickly, George Papadopoulos, because people will say, well, uh, Papadopoulos is a liar. He's a confessed liar. He admitted to lying. Why should we believe him? Can you please break down the detail? People don't understand the details of this so-called lying to the FBI. If you can summarize this real fast, what exactly was the false information that you uh, pled guilty to? Yeah, sure. Um, So just to make it clear to the listeners, my entire case was about a FARA violation that Mueller wanted to charge me with acting as an unregistered agent of Israel. But maybe we could get into that on the second segment. Yes, definitely. So what what apparently my misinformation was, was telling the FBI that I met Joseph Mifsud in April instead of March. So I was I was I was confused. I'm was sorry confused. for laughing, but that yeah, we... look, 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 this is this is the type of uh, this is the kind of focus that these guys wanted to go after. They wanted yeah. to get anyone. They they ended up charging me because and you look at you can look at the status of offense. That's I right. I tell the FBI this guy told me this information. They make no uh, they're not even shocked by what I told them. And then after that, as they're trying to get me in a perjury trap, they start asking me these bizarre questions like, when did you meet him? What month was it? And I mixed up my months and I ended up getting charged for that. So I just want the listeners to understand to what extent the Comey FBI went to to indict people affiliated with the Trump campaign and with Trump himself in right. order to essentially undermine his presidency. Hold that thought. George Papadopoulos is our guest, and that's that's a remarkable thing. People have to understand that. If you only watch MSNBC, you would never know that George Papadopoulos' great crime was that he said he met a guy in April instead of March. Uh, we're going to continue talking about his book, Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crosshairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump, George Papadopoulos. We're going to talk to him about whether or not the FBI did, in fact, spy on the Trump campaign. He would know because he was the target of that spying. That's next on The Larry O'Connor Show. We continue here on The Larry O'Connor Show with George Papadopoulos. Again, his book, uh, and only he could write it, 
deep state target, how I got caught in the crosshairs of the plot to bring down President Trump. And I want to remind you all the timing of this book is incredible as it dropped two days after the Mueller report was delivered. Uh, George, a couple of things I just want to clear up here um, so we can get to the bottom of sort of or try to get to the bottom of what happened with you here. Uh, First, we're told by The New York Times through leaks from the FBI, I suppose, that you were at uh, the London's Kensington Wine Rooms. You were drunk and you were telling uh, Australia's top diplomat to the UK, Alexander Downer, that the Russians had a bunch of dirt on Hillary Clinton and you were with the Trump campaign and you guys knew about it. Um, First, a couple of things. Were you drunk that night? Okay, so that story has been completely debunked. And, uh, you know, let me explain really what happened there. Um, This guy, so about three months ago, I was invited to testify in front of the House Oversight Committee uh, along with three other witnesses. And those three witnesses were Jim Comey, Sally Yates, and Loretta Lynch. And people were questioning, why would George Papadopoulos be invited to testify in front of the House Oversight Oversight Committee with Congressman Mark Meadows to discuss FISA abuse? And my uh, congressional testimony just was released around three days ago or four days ago. And as you can see in this congressional testimony under oath, it's clear <clears throat> that this guy, Alexander Downer, this Australian diplomat, was anything but a uh, Australian diplomat just looking to uh, talk foreign policy with a Trump advisor. But in fact, he was a weaponized asset sent to make contact with me and attempt to sabotage the campaign. Now, Congressman Mark Meadows, around three weeks ago, he made a reference on Fox News to, sit, to ambassadors who were conspiring with the FBI to undermine the Trump campaign. It's my opinion that he was referring exactly to Alexander Downer. Downer. Yes, the next point I want to make about this is, if what Alexander Downer is saying is true, which it's not, why on earth would Congressman Mark Meadows, the top ally in Congress of President Trump, be tweeting about my case and asking the president to declassify surveillance and FISA material regarding my case involving... Uh, the Australians and the British and other countries. Of course he wouldn't. That was a lie. It was some sort of cover story that uh, the FBI or 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 whoever was involved with leaking some sort of bizarre information to the New York Times uh, did in order to keep the attention away from what really triggered this investigation, and that was the Steele dossier. Right. So these that, are the that, facts. That's these why this facts. is critically important, because yes. if, 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 if it wasn't the Alexander Downer Papadopoulos meeting in London that triggered the investigation, as they're claiming, then it had to be the Steele dossier, and that's a big problem for the Justice Department and the FBI. Real fast, I want to talk about Stefan Halper. Uh, this yes. is the person who uh, they keep saying, oh, he's not a spy, he's an informant. Okay, call him what you will. What was your interaction with this guy? So just for the listeners out there and who might not know who this person is, so Stefan Helper uh, has been outed as a CIA, FBI asset with actual uh, ties to the MI6 in London as well. Uh, In September of 2016, at the height of uh, the FBI uh, illicitly seeking FISA warrants against uh, members of the Trump campaign, this man... Uh, reached out to me and told me that he wants to pay me $3,000 to fly me out to London and provide a five-star accommodation to have me write a policy report regarding my uh, understanding of Israel and, uh, the, and the energy business in Israel, which I was an expert on, and that's why I was hired to join the Trump and Carson campaign. So I said, okay, I'll come out and see you. And I didn't understand when I was going out to London to see this person that he was actually some sort of uh, informant and uh, part of a sting operation to try and entrap me into some fake information about Russia, which I had nothing to do with. So he has been outed now. Uh, At the time, I had no idea. And this person, Stefan Helper, not only made contact with me, he made contact with people like Sam Clovis, Carter Page. He uh, ingratiated himself within the transition team, and uh, it's my current understanding that the IG reports and uh, some of these other investigations that are currently ongoing are going to reveal what his real role was in this entire saga, and it's a lot more damaging to the FBI than anyone could possibly imagine. And, and so, George, this guy calls you, says, we're going to fly you out here, we're going to give you 3000 bucks. we're going to put you up at a five-star accommodation, and then in the course of hanging out with you, he tries to learn what's going on in the Trump campaign and tries to, you know, find out all this other stuff. How is that? That's spying. 
You know, they refuse to call this guy a spy, uh, but that, I mean, to me, that's that's certainly a spy's behavior. Uh, but we got to leave it there, sadly. But uh, you'll come back. You're an L.A. guy. So next time I'm in, in the studios in L.A., you'll come by, hang out in the studio. We'll have a blast. Uh- Oh, I love it, Larry. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm right. looking forward to seeing you in studio. Thanks so much you for You bet. Me. And I'm looking forward to the movie version of this book, If Hollywood Had a Brain, Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crossfairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump. That's George Papadopoulos, and I'm Larry O'Connor on KBC. 